Hi everyone, Happy New Year. We're back and having a look at this question, question five from the work that I set you. It's a tricky question, so it requires a little bit of thought. Um, I'm going to break it down. Uh, part A is easy, part B and C are tricky, part D is a standard question. I'll go ahead and do um, all of it. Please contact me, we can arrange extra sessions one on one so that you can go through anything you don't understand. Okay, so. So part A, we have a normal distribution with the lifetime of the thing, which is L. And that can be modelled as a normal with our um, parameters being 18 and 4 squared. So we want to find the probability that L is greater than 16 straight away to the calculator. And we get 0.6915 rounded. Anything that rounds to that is good. It's 0.692 would be fine. One mark. Well done. Beautiful. We need to keep this answer for later. Right, and on part B. At the start of her exam, Alice puts four new batteries into her calculator. She has already used her calculator for 16 hours, but has another four hours to sit. Find the probability that her calculator will not stop working for the remaining time that Alice is sitting exams. This has a lot of unpacking to do. Firstly, she's already used the calculator for 16 hours and we need to work out the probability that they're going to last for 20. So we need to start by finding the probability that L is greater than 20. Okay, and this is again it's totally standard. We just go ahead and put the numbers into the calculator. The probability that it's greater than 20 is 0.3085. Okay, so um, we know now that we've got a chance that they last for longer than 20 hours. Now, that's not the whole thing, because the question says she's already used her calculator for this time. So we have to recognize that this is asking us to do a conditional probability. And the conditional probability is um, the probability of um, A and B, so that it's lasted longer than 16 hours, divided by the probability that it's already lasted, sorry, the probability that it's lasted longer than 16 and longer than 20, so obviously the probability that it's longer than 20, divided by the probability of A, and that gives us the probability of um, B given A, which is what we're after. We're looking for this in play here, where A and B are the probability, for A is the probability that it lasts more than 16 hours, and B is the probability that it lasts more than 20. So clearly the difficult part of this question is recognizing that we're talking about a conditional probability. If we have that, we can say that the probability that it lasts more than 20 hours, given that it's already lasted more than 16 hours, is equal to 0 0.3085 over 0.6915 for each battery. That's for one battery. So, so that's 0.4462. Right, that's for one battery, but we need to do this for all four batteries. So for that being one battery, we need to work out the probability for all four lasting. So we're going to do 0.4462 to the power of 4, which gives us um, 0 0.03 something, 9, 6. Okay, good enough. So that's our answer to part B. Now there's a lot going on there, and you can pick up marks for every step that you do right. There's a mark for getting that bit. There's at least one, probably two, for getting this bit correct. And there's certainly workings for understanding that it's you've worked out one battery, not four. Um, it's tough. It's asking you to interpret a question and work out that we're using another part of maths here. Tough, but this is the stuff that you need to do to get the A stars. On to part C. And again, we're going to need our results from here. Right, we're on to part C. Uh, Alice has two new batteries. So after the first 16 hours, she... Uh, Trucks away two of the batteries randomly and replaces them with two new batteries. You might ask yourself why she doesn't buy four batteries or why she doesn't. I mean, what she's doing makes no sense, but let's carry on. 
Um, show that the probability that her cal probability will calculator will not stop working is 0.19 to four significant figures. So we've had two uh, batteries that have already been working for 16 and need to continue for 20. So that is not that is 0.4462 squared for those two to keep working. But we also need the probability that the other batteries last for longer than four hours. We can get that straight from the calculator, which is 0.9998, I think. So we need to multiply this by 0.998 squared and if you do that you get 0 0.199 as required. Okay so the problems on this part B and part C are that those questions are novel. You've done all of the bits of maths before but you've probably never seen them put together in this way and that is the kind of thing that they're going to want to do to test you at the highest levels, the A star. Altogether that's eight marks out of your exam. It's significant and so if you can do any bits of it any parts that you do, even if you don't get the whole thing correct, will be valuable. Let's move on to part D, which, as I said, is a fairly standard bit. Okay, part D is a straightforward hypothesis test using a normal distribution. We need to remember the formulas involves uh, dividing by the number of the size of the sample. So we get, um, in this case, we're going to be stating that um, L with the line on it because it's the uh, sample L can be modeled as a normal and here we're going to state that the um, mean is mu uh, I guess we should probably use s but or some um, x bar but we'll go with m and mu for now and the standard deviation will be 4 over 4 or squared over 20. So that means that the standard deviation is 4 over the square root of 20. Okay, right. Um, so we have to state our hypotheses. Uh, H naught is going to be that our mu is equal to 18. And our H1, this is going to be um, that the, the, she thinks it's more. Than 18. So now this is a one tail test at 5%. So we need to find the probability that L bar is greater than 19.2. And we can just go ahead and straight away and do that on the calculator. And I get 0 0.08 something 99. Okay. Um, 0.899 is more than 0.05. No, that's the uh, cutoff point, the significance that we're looking for. And uh, so there is no evidence to reject H0. Okay, excuse me a tick. No evidence to reject H0. Beautiful handwriting. We can also therefore say that uh, there is no evidence to support Alice's claim. Okay, remember we need that final in context sentence to get full marks. Um, just a thought, the mu is the correct thing to use in this, um, having reviewed it. Um, and I think that's everything on this one. Do let me know if I need to go over anything else. We've got the rest of this week for revision um, outside of class time. So if you want to get in contact with me, we can do one-on-one -on -one sessions. All right, lovely, thanks a lot.